Hey, welcome back, everybody. This is another TTM video. We like to get autographs, TTM, or through the mail, simply by sending our favorite athletes and celebrities letters in the mail, along with cards, photographs, magazines, whatever you want autographed. And along with a self-addressed stamped envelope, you'll be surprised how many times you can get a return. We've got an 8x10 today. We know who it's from. There's an address label on it. Along with seven, seven returns. So let's get right into it. First one's coming from San Diego, California. We get a lot from San Diego. It's, <laughs> it's Rolf Benersk. Rolf Benersk, I'd like to buy a Val, which is kind of ironic because... He was chosen to host the Wheel of Fortune after Pat Sajak left for a year to have his own talk show. Rolf Benerski took over as the host. And he doesn't have a vow in his name. He needs some more or something. <laughs> on that 85 tops and 78 tops. I wonder if that's 78 is his rookie. I think it is. Look at that. Whoop. Feature the 85 tops because we like this 85 top set. He's uh, 65 years old. He was a kicker. Nine seasons from 79 to 86, all for the San Diego Chargers. Had a really good career. Was an All-Pro in 1980. Played in the Pro Bowl in 82. Good player and a good person, too, because he won the 1983 Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. He's in the Chargers Hall of Fame and a member of the team's 40th and 50th anniversary teams. 49 days, no fee for Rolf Benerski. Next one's coming from... Where? North Dallas, Texas. North Texas. Should have opened these beforehand. Probably save some time. Bobby Witt. Nice. 56-year-old former right-handed pitcher. One. Two, three, and four. 87 tops. I like that A's card right there. Let's go ahead and feature that one. This is a Donruss card from 94, 95. 95 Donruss. That's 86 tops traded. That's his rookie card there. Quite a few people signed from that 86 tops traded set. Be a good one to purchase. Get pretty cheaply. Get a lot of signers in there. Yeah, obviously the father of Bobby Witt Jr. I've been haven't been lucky enough to get his um, autograph back. I sent him June, I think, of 2020. Still waiting on those cards to return, but Bobby Witt Sr. got him back to me. He's been a great signer through the years. Everybody must have at least one Bobby Witt card. I mean, he played in the height of the junk wax era, featured in every set, and he'll sign multiple cards. Great TTM guy. Uh, pretty solid player as well. Finished 150, 142 and 157 overall with about a 2,000 strikeouts. He's got a World Series ring from his final season. Played with the 2001 Diamondbacks on his way out the door toward retirement. And he played on that 84 civil, silver medal Olympic team with Will Clark and Mark McGuire and the rest of them. 28 days, no fee, Bobby Witt. Next one coming from North Houston, Texas. North Houston. Got from Dallas, Houston. I'm going to get my note back. No. Wrote his own note. Oh, this is from Robert Reed. Hey, Michael, thanks for your letter. Pray you and your family are safe. Great players, great teammates, and great games. Best always. Robert Reed. I think I mentioned that his era that he played in was my favorite era. Tough guys, great players. Really good signer. This is the first time I've gotten him back. Got some basketball cards recently. You guys saw those in a mail day video. Told you I was going to start sending those out. Been getting those back slowly but surely. He's 65 years old. He was a uh, shooting guard. You see both listed here, guard and forward. He's a shooting guard and a small forward, kind of interchangeably. Played for 16 professional seasons from 77 to 92. Mostly in the NBA, but he played in a few in the CBA too here and there. And over his, overall, his uh, NBA career, scored more than 10,000 points, about 11 and a half a game, and uh, 4,000 plus rebounds, four and a half a game, and 2,500 assists, exactly. So pretty good, pretty good player. 
He became a head coach after his playing career in the CBA and overseas. Got that back in 14 days. I'll count that as a uh, three of two. Sent him two cards and got back the sign note as well. Really great return from Robert Reed. 14 days, no fee. Next is coming from Montgomery, Alabama. Oh, let me tell you about Alabama. He's a big one. He's a hoss. Les Lancaster. One, two, three, and four. Sweet. 89 Fleer. 90 Donners. 92 score. Always pops with that white border. 92 tops looks good as well. We'll feature the 89 Fleer for the set. 90 Donners. Been waiting a while for this one. Les Lancaster made me wait. That's okay. He's 58 years old. He was a right handed relief pitcher mostly. Seven seasons. 87 to 93. Cubs for five of those years. Cubs 87 to 91, including uh, leading, help leading the Cubs to the 89 uh, division championship. Finished with an overall record 41 and 28 with a 4.05 ERA. 53 days, no fee for less. Lancaster. Next one's coming from Medford, Oregon. What? Medford, Oregon. We don't get too many from Medford, Oregon, obviously. There's former pirate Bob Johnson. Put him in upside down. That's fine. That thin blue Sharpie vertically on the 72 tops and the 74 tops. The year after Clemente died, they wore that 21 patch in the 73 season. He passed away New Year's Eve, 1970. Three, New Year's Eve, 72, New Year's Day, 73. Bob Johnson, that 72 tops. And that is a OPG printed in Canada. 71 OPG signed by Bob Johnson. He was on the World Series winning Pirates as well as the 69 Mets. Let's see if that's featured back here. That's 69 Amazing Mets. There he is, two games, two innings pitched. I think he got a ring with those teams. That team. He's 77 years old. He played for seven seasons, 69 to 74. And uh, about five different teams, three of three of those years with the Pirates. And in his relatively brief career, he did win two rings, like I said, 69-71. And in the 71 playoffs, playoffs, he outpitched uh, Hall of Famer Juan Marichaux with the Giants. Game three, he pitched eight innings, gave up one run, and got the victory. And old Juan Marichal took the loss. Game three, 71 National League Championship Series. They finished, uh, we lost game two of the World Series. They couldn't, couldn't find the magic in the World Series, but uh, yeah, the Pirates were down three to one. They came back and won that in seven games. So He finished 28-34 overall record, 17 days, no fee out of Oregon for Mr. Bob Johnson. Next one's coming from Portland, Oregon. Whoa, two from Oregon. That's got to be a record. It's Mr. Trevor Wilson, 2020. I should have waited. Should have waited for that request and got a 2021. Maybe I'll have to get him again next year. $91, 91 score, 89 Fleer. We're going to feature the 90 Dupper Deck. How about that idea? Trevor Wilson, he puts the year a la Bill Lee. I have to get Mr. Lee in again in 2021 as well. Finished up right at the end of the year here, 2020, Trevor Wilson. Pretty good pitcher. He's 54 years old. He was a left-handed pitcher for eight seasons, off and on from 88 to 98. And for two of the California teams, the Giants for seven years and then one for the Angels. In 1992, he threw an immaculate inning. What's that you say? Yeah, three strikeouts on nine pitches. It's only been done 22 times by a left-handed pitcher, 94 times overall. He became a pitching coach after his playing days, worked for the Angels last time I heard. We'll have to see if he's still working there. How many days? Eight days. Quick return. Eight days. You send to him, you'll get 2021 inscription, I hope. All right, last one, last card anyways, coming from San Diego. San Diego, California. We start from San Diego, and then we end it in San Diego. 
All right. Whoa. Hey, Mike Haynes' rookie card. Nice. Did not sign the index cards. He did sign his rookie card, though. Hey, been waiting on this for a while. 67-year-old Hall of Fame cornerback. He played for 14 seasons, 76 to 89. About half of his career with the Patriots and then the second half with the Raiders. When he won the Super Bowl in Super Bowl 18, 1984, over the Redskins. Nine times in the Pro Bowl. Nine. 46 lifetime interceptions. He's on the NFL's 75th anniversary all-time team, the 100th anniversary all-time team. He's on the 1980s all-decade team, one of the greatest cornerbacks of all time. College Football Hall of Fame in 2000 out of Arizona State. Pro Football Hall of Fame three years prior to that in 1997. There is a fee. I believe it's five. Let me check. It might be five or ten. I can't remember right off the top of my head. That's 50 days I waited for that with Mr. Haynes. Made me nervous. Last one's coming from Bayonne, New Jersey. Bayonne, New Jersey. We know who it is. It has an address label, but I don't want to give that away. I don't think. He put an extra one in there. That is Mr. Chuck Weckner. To my pal Mike, Chuck Weckner. Put his card here where he works. At a beverage company. That's his great fight against Muhammad Ali. The one that captured the attention of a young Sylvester Stallone who decided to write a screenplay based upon the fight between Wepner and Ali in 75, where Wepner just refused to go down. He was never on the camp canvas in any fight until Ali put him down in the very last seconds of the fight. He was nicknamed the Bayon Bleeder. He's from Bayon, New Jersey. And he was used to cut and bleed a lot, but he, he gave Ali everything he wanted. That's the Apollo Creed character in the Rocky movies, of course. That's pretty cool. That's the one I sent him there, pummeling Ali in the face. He knocked Ali down. And there's a picture of this one. I sent him two 8x10s, and he sent me the third. To my pal Mike, Chuck Weppner. That's him knocking Ali to the canvas. Ali hadn't been knocked down too many times, I can tell you that for sure. Pretty darn cool, Chuck Weppner. Hooked me up with the extra. Hope that stands up there. Yeah, he's 81 years old now, and I got that back really quickly. 11 days, no fee. Uh, he fought Ch Sonny Liston early in his career, and Ali kind of late in his career. And there's no doubt that Stallone modeled Rocky after the Chuck Wepner fight. That's been acknowledged and admitted to. But, uh, yeah, Rocky has a statue at the top of the steps where he ran up there in the movie. Well, that was based upon uh, Wepner's running up the steps at his hometown. And now Wepner has a statue there. They've, they've built one for him.